Good evening to everyone who have joined the earnings call for the period ended June 30th, 2020. Now I would like to introduce the members of the management who are present for the call. Along with me, I have Mr. Vinod Kumar, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Venkat Raman GS, Chief Financial Officer of the company. I would like to start the conference call by going through the safe harbor clause. Certain statements in this call concerning our future growth prospects are forward-looking statements which involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those in such forward-looking statements. The risks and uncertainties relating to these statements include but not related to fluctuations in earnings, our ability to successfully integrate acquisitions, competition in an area of business, client concentration, liability for damages in our contracts, withdrawal of tax incentives, political instability, unauthorized use of our intellectual property, and general economic conditions affecting our industry. So with this, I now hand out the call to Mr. Vinod Kumar to take it forward. Thank you, Krishna Kant. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's great to see you all in the call today and sincerely hope that you and your family members are safe and in sound health. I'm pleased to inform you that at this point, all Subexians are sound and safe. A handful of Subexians in various geographies were tested positive for COVID-19. Most have recovered and the rest are getting better at their homes. We are extending all possible support for these Subexians and have also launched Subexaid, which is an internal setup to primarily coordinate and help the Subexians in case someone is not well. Our priority is the safety and well-being of Subexians while minimizing the effect of any disruption to our customers. Subexians who, despite these trying circumstances, rallied with commitment and seal to deliver the same level of service and excellence to our clients. Against this backdrop of the pandemic, we had a steady first quarter in terms of our financial performance. The revenue for FY21 quarter one was at rupees 887 million as against rupees 790 million of quarter one FY1920, which translates to a growth of about 12%. Our EBITDA also increased by 70% and ended at rupees 296 million as against rupees 175 million during the same period last year. Our profit after tax was at 150, rupees 152 million as against rupees 53 million in quarter one FI20. From an operations perspective, most of our teams are working remotely. However, we have also kept our Bangalore office open with all physical distancing norms and precautions so that Subexians can collaborate in person for doing work elements that are difficult to be done remotely. Most of our customer engagements have resumed, albeit with a lot of challenges associated with remote working. Working like this is new for both customers and Subex, and it will take some more time for things to settle. Most of the projects have started remotely, but are witnessing delays and stoppages on account of non-availability of hardware and other site readiness due to supply chain issues at the customer end. We have also stepped up our business development activities. For instance, we recently conducted a virtual Digital Africa Summit, and it was a very successful event with about 200 delegates. Overall, Subexians have stepped up to the challenge and are spending more time than we used to due to various constraints put on us by this pandemic. Our telco customers have started reporting last quarter revenue, with most of them reporting dips averaging 6 to 10% in various geographies. The EBITDA impact is to the tune of negative 30 to 50%. We expect that this will impact on the prioritization of new projects. They have also reported delays in the rollout of new IoT projects on account of the difficulty in fulfilling contracts due to field movements, movement restrictions, and supply chain challenges like inability to procure smart meters, sensors, and other IoT devices. We are closely monitoring the situation and making the necessary adjustments to our operating plan. Having said this, 
we assess the long-term outlook on digital trust to remain strong. Therefore, we will continue to stay the course and focus on execution of the Three Horizons strategy to become the leader in digital trust. The investments into R&D continue unhindered as these are imperative to build capabilities and scale our business. In Horizon 1, that's our core telco segment, we will be adding augmented analytics platform, partner management, and capacity management solution to our portfolio this year. The next generation augmented analytics platform based on open source components will help our customers to manage large volumes of data and generate meaningful insights. Partner management and capacity management solutions will address the emerging needs of telecom operators in the 5G scenarios, and we will leverage technologies like blockchain and machine learning. We are also very cognizant of the fact that digital trust is a very critical aspect as we go into, the, into these areas, and we are leading with digital trust when we talk about these new solutions. We believe that these additions will make our solution portfolio extremely in interesting to our customers and also will enable Subex to position uh, ourselves as a, as a major partner to the telcos, particularly as we get into the 5G scenarios where telcos will be going after the enterprise segment in addition to the current retail segment. Horizon 2 continues to be our focus areas for growth and we are making slow but steady progress. Unfortunately, this also happens to be the area that has been drastically affected due to the pandemic. However, we expect 5G will initiate an explosion in the number of connected devices and along with it, the need for IoT security. The current crisis has only exasperated the need for more automation. We are currently deploying our security solution in a 5G edge cloud setup in APAC and are confident that it will become one of the reference sites for 5G security. Another interesting one is the deployment at a European fuel cell manufacturer wherein we will be securing all the fuel cells that goes into electric cars made by these manufacturers. Further, we intend to strengthen our go-to-market channel for more, with more strategic partners and OEMs. And Horizon 3, um, while still early days, we are progressing well on crunch metrics and ID center. Crunch metrics, our anomaly, automated anomaly detection solution is focused on solving specific business problems like pricing error, transaction glitches, and supply chain issues, IT infrastructure issues in the e-commerce, and fintech segment in addition to the telco space. ID, ID, Central, ID Central's digital analytics platform, soft launched in Indonesia, has several data custodians coming on board to achieve about 40% coverage of the population. The total population is around 300 million. So we have achieved a sizable coverage of the, uh, of the population and we are able to do very smart identity analytics uh, in, that, in that set. We are now in the process of engaging enterprises to solve their digital identity analytics need in that market. As indicated during the last call, we will also be increasing our investment in the training of Subexians as it will be necessary to navigate and grow our company out of this crisis. Now coming to the capital reduction exercise, uh, the whole process is progressing as per our plan. After getting the required approval from the shareholders, we have started the NCLT process and we will keep you, keep you updated of the progress. As we go through these challenging times, we are trying to keep our spirits high. I want to appreciate the effort of Subexians who, despite all these trying circumstances, are rallying to deliver the same level of excellence and service to our clients. And lastly, and lastly, but most importantly, the shareholders' support means a lot to us, and we thank you for all the confidence that you have reposed on us. With that, I thank you all, and I hand over the, uh, to the operator for the question and answer section.
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Raj Kumar Oja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, sir. I'm Raj Kumar Oja from Allahabad. Sir, I received a mail from uh, Subex, wherein I was informed that uh, uh, when capital reduction would take place, uh, ISIN to be activated by corporate action. Now, BSC, NSC, and Subex are all corporate uh, entities. My question is, while undertaking activation exercise, would sh uh, Subex shares would be delisted and thereafter relisted? What would be the fair price mechanism? This is question number one. My question number two is, regarding crunch metri metrics, whether Flipkart and Big Basket are Subex customers, have we started any commercial activity in uh, FinTech? Thank you, sir. Mr. Oja, I'll take the first question uh, and part of it I'll also ask my colleague Krishna Khan to answer. So I think in the, the capital reduction exercise, as you know, what we are looking to do is only reduce the face value of the shares. So, right. So that doesn't change anything in terms of the listing or the uh, listing act. Delisting. Right. So nothing will change. So as and when we get the approvals and then... Um, we put that effect. That effect will be put to uh, put to in the in the um, system, and uh, we'll follow the processes required. But trading uh, activities will continue; nothing will stop. So, for your specific question on the I yes, I am. I said, so, 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 yeah. Hello, sir. So, I have said to you, like uh, uh, on the email. So, we will have a new ISN by by way of a corporate action raised with the, both the depositories. And once uh, once the uh, approval has been given, this ISIN will be all the shares in the previous ISIN will be ported to the new ISIN, and there will be no kind of uh, new fresh valuation or or an average rate uh, concept here. It's only a reduction in the face value of shares. Yes. Okay, coming coming back coming to the question of crunch metrics, we are engaged with uh, uh, several customers at this point in time in the fintech and the e-commerce space. Uh, it is um, the because of the COVID related things, uh, some of these things have been deprioritized because they had other priorities in place. But uh, we believe that by, by, the, by the end of quarter two and uh, beginning of quarter three, uh, some of these POCs will be, uh, will be resumed and we will be able to come back to you with some specific details. With respect to some of the engagements currently we have, we have not got the specific uh, uh, approval from the customers to go public with it. Uh, but I can confirm that we have started engaging with the customers both in the fintech and the e-commerce space. Thank you, sir. Sir, so, uh, my next question is, uh, have we any patents in Horizon 2 and Horizon 3? Uh, we have uh, started uh, filing patents. We have um, we are we have filed uh, uh, a few patents uh, both last quarter, and we are also in the process of filing a few patents. Uh, this is predominantly in the new areas. Yes. Thank you, sir. My question is over. Thank Sorry, you. I just want to clarify that we just filed the patents. Now it is a process for us to be granted. So I just want to qualify that. Okay, so thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kranti Batani from Wealth Mills Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations for a good set of numbers. And uh, Subex has been improving the performance from past uh, couple of quarters. Uh, my compliments to all the management. Just want to know whether... How uh, the foreseeable near-term future uh, in this kind of pandemic times uh, is COVID is really helping you, uh, uh, helping you uh, in terms of your uh, IoT and uh, other platforms, and how the near-term future is looking for Subex? 
Okay, so um, so look, I think as I mentioned, uh, the telcos have been affected, but probably the good thing is that uh, that segment has been affected much lesser than some of the other segments. Uh, so relatively, I think telcos are in a, in, a, in a good shape when compared to other things. Having said that, as I mentioned, uh, the reduction in the revenues have translated to a significant EBITDA reduction for some of these customers. And, uh, and therefore, we are waiting as to what will be some of the impact. For sure, there would be some reprioritization of the new projects, but we still feel that the long-term investment uh, of the telcos on account, on account of uh, you know, 5G moving to enterprises, uh, and uh, making getting more digital uh, is is uh, will be will be there, and therefore some of our new portfolios that we are aligned with that uh, would be very relevant there. Uh, with respect to IoT, as I mentioned, uh, IoT a lot of con projects coming up, but uh, but the execution of the projects are becoming very very difficult because of the lack of people able to uh, get onto the site because it is very it, it requires delivery installation of physical devices. So therefore, uh, you know, there, it, has, it has taken a hit with respect to the implementation of some of these projects. But as and when many, the market starts opening up, we expect uh, those projects to uh, sort of uh, start, uh, you know, getting into the, uh, into the deployment and the acceptance phase. And uh, things should also look, uh, look up good uh, as we go to the quarter three, quarter four, uh, uh, Mr. Kranti. Given the kind of heightened activity in, in telecom, especially in India, what is the kind of uh, uh, opportunities uh, uh, coming for Subex, especially with respect to the geography of India alone? Well, uh, look, I think as, we, as like any other market, I think India is also, whatever you're seeing in India is a sort of a reflection of what we are seeing across the board. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on data. The, more, the entire, uh, ma, 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 you know, uh, the business is shifting into, into data. But I think what we are seeing much more is on the enterprise uh, enterprise move. That means that uh, the telcos gearing up to cater as the entire digital provider for the enterprise. So I guess that the, the, the scenarios that we are seeing in India is kind of a reflection of what we have across the board. And the same... As I mentioned in the earlier question, as and when they go towards more digital, uh, towards more enterprise segments, and start rolling out more 5G solutions, uh, we will be more relevant because we have cutting-edge uh, solutions on the capacity management front, on the security front, on the digital trust front, which all of them will be very, very uh, uh, important uh, on this journey. How would like to, uh, this, this is my final question, how would like to place, Subex is going to play a role, whether it is a telecom company or a technology company, how you are going to place Subex and what is your vision uh, for Subex in the days to come? Our vision is to be the largest provider of digital trust solution to every vertical, including telco. So that's our vision, as, as, as probably you would appreciate uh, trust is a very important aspect as we go into the uh, into the digital economy where we have we cannot see many people we cannot see many enterprises so how do you how do you establish a trust based on which you can uh, transact with with one another now this will become a very important aspect and will be one of the strongest pillar going forward and we want subex to be known as the leader in digital trust that's what we are aiming for I will take one more minute of your time and how the margins are uh, uh, looking forward as there is a lot of uh, cutthroat competition is happening in uh, telecoms and all. How the margins are uh, looking forward? Look, these are the, the, particularly on our new areas, I think it is a value-based uh, thing. So at this, we are on, on our core areas. It's a mature, mature space where I think the margins will probably remain as it is today. But on the new areas is where I think that these are, these are much more value-based selling and where we expect that the margins will be much, much higher than on our mature area. So broadly, we think as a company, uh, it should we, we don't see any any changes on account of uh, some of the COVID related issues at this point in time. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: please limit your questions to per participant. Should you have any follow up, request to rejoin the queue, please. The next question is from the line of Jay Daniel from Entropy Advisors. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, sir. Uh, I have some book bookkeeping questions. Uh, what was the free cash generation in this quarter? Uh, what is the cash on books as on quarter end, and what is the order book as on date? That's my first question. Cash end of the quarter, Jay, we had about 114 uh, crores. The free cash generation was about. Give me a little uh, minute. I'll just give you that number. Um, so. Uh, and uh, what is the third question you had? Order book as on date. The, the new order book that we that we booked in quarter one was the tune of about eight million dollars. Uh, and you started off with I think forty four forty four million. You would have executed some in during the quarter. So what was it? Uh, the pending order book as on in June. Look, I think I think the pending order book. If you if you look at look at that that way, uh, Jay, it will be. Uh, you, know, you will have to look at the managed services and the annuity that we have over multiple years. So the uh, I, so the way we look at it as against the 45 million, which were sorry, 44 million, which was the order book for the whole year last year. Uh, when compared with that, we are booked 8 million in this uh, in this uh, in the, in the last quarter, and a part of that will get executed during the course of this year, and a part of it, based on the construct of the contract, will flow over to next year, Jay. Oh, okay. Okay. Cash flow is about seventeen point eight eight crores. Seventeen point eight eight crores. Okay. And uh, there was a sharp reduction in uh, my second question. There was a sharp reduction in cost from budgeted levels. It's lower by twenty two percent. How much of this is permanent, and can we expect similar cost to trend in the next three quarters? As a large part of your costs are fixed in nature. Yeah, uh, Venki, you want to address? So I think, see, if you look at it, I think because of the COVID, our uh, travel costs have been uh, significantly lower uh, compared to what you would have incurred uh, if business was usual. So that obviously has led to our cost being lower. Uh, apart from that, I think, um, uh, uh, and other, uh, and some of the other spends also, we have been a little more cautious in terms of uh, marketing and other related spends in terms of how much we wanted to do, given the way uh, the Q1 was. So I think those were the primary reasons for the cost being lower. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations uh, for a great set of numbers. Um, just one uh, question. One on the 5G. Um, when do you think that will start in earnest in the U.S. and in Europe and uh, we start to see uh, some contract wins on that side? Okay, uh, thank you, Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh, I think this 5G are in various uh, stages of uh, deployment in both in US and Europe. And now what we also see is the emergence of a new set of private operators, which are not the traditional, uh, so traditional telcos like Verizon and BTs, uh, but we are seeing the emergence of a new set of operators who are very close to the enterprises getting into the fray and setting up the 5G network and the, and the connectivity and the digitization uh, associated digitization to the enterprise. So the activities are slowly picking up, and uh, we uh, we will see a lot more activity in, in on the calendar quarter three and quarter uh, quarter four of this year. Uh, so uh, it has already started, Rajesh. As far as we are concerned. Uh, I think that uh, our new new solutions, particularly on the partner management front, IoT security, and uh, um, and the capacity management thing, these are primarily aimed at the at the 5G and what comes as a, the ecosystem post the 5G. So we believe that uh, we will see some engagements uh, around this thing in the later part of this year. As I have indicated in my briefing, we already have one project under execution in uh, APAC in the 5G security space, and we intend that to, to make it as one of the reference sites, not just for us, but when it comes to 5G, Mac, mobile edge computing, uh, security thing, we, uh, we intend to make it as one of the reference sites uh, in, the, in the region, uh, Rajesh. Oh, that's great. Um, just a quick clarification, Vinod. So you used to have a, a network management product. Um, has that been also folded into this partner management, or uh, that is still is a separate product? 
it's a separate product. Partner management, uh, Rajesh, is about is the five G is five G and associated business is all about telcos coming together and uh, partnering with a lot more partners and and taking uh, uh, many more solutions than they are currently taking to the market. Now you would have seen in in Geo partnering with many of the things to get the entire vertical integration with both with partners and themselves so that they can take a bouquet of digital services. Uh, to around all areas to the customers. Now, this is what go globally uh, most of the telcos are partnering with. So now, if you look at the number of partners, and these are all different kind of products, different kind of models, they would need a very robust solution, first, which they can trust the partners, they can transact well, they can settle with, they can uh, construct new bundles and whatnot. So this, our partner management solution is around this area. So uh, this is very different than the network management portfolio, which is a separate portfolio, Rajesh. So in 5G, would you be selling the network management portfolio as well? Or uh, what's, if you can just talk about that. I, I thought as the 5G gets rolled out, you're likely to not only sell the partner management, but also the network management product. Or am I mistaken in assuming that? No, I think there are two aspects. Partner management is one part, and the other part is the capacity management. Now, capacity management is where I think we are looking at AI ML-based capability wherein uh, we look at the forecast of traffic, and then we imprint that with the, with the, um, with the network capabilities, and then we will, look, we will aid uh, the telcos to manage the capacity. Because if you look at 5G plus the virtualization, the number of devices, network devices that are going to be in the in the network will be 10 times uh, or more than what it is today. So it is important for them to look at based on the uh, based on the traffic condition how to lay this network. Where do you build the capacity? And that is what our our capacity management solution is aimed at. So we are talking about two solutions serving two different uh, aspects uh, of the ecosystem post 5G. Rajesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amish Kanani from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, uh, we understand that uh, you know a lot of uh, CapEx, at least from the Q1, uh, got deferred. Uh, my question was uh, on the 5G side more uh, uh, than anything else, the new CapEx. Uh, my question was, sir, uh, but uh, we understand that telecom as a sector and as a service is much more important in the post-COVID world. So are we uh, looking at uh, in the scenario where the 5G CapEx get deferred, uh, still the our clients uh, very likely to do well? Of course, you mentioned that uh, some of the clients have uh, shown a decline in EBITDA. Are we looking at uh, wallet share of their spending uh, uh, remaining same and hence, uh, say, maybe Horizon 1 products might do relatively okay vis-a-vis, -vis, say, earlier? and they may continue to spend on Horizon 1 products versus Horizon 2, or you see the, the challenges if the 5G deployment uh, gets delayed, uh, there will be challenges in, say, uh, running into Q2 and Q3. And, of course, I, I'm referring to short-term versus long-term. Thanks. Uh, so, so look, I think I think uh, the, what we are seeing is that uh, there is a big change with respect to the telcos and the traffic and the traffic pattern and whatnot, right? And uh, from that, entire traffic has moved from the kind of the industrial clusters to the residential, and, and it's a big change what they're doing. So I think at this point in time, I think uh, the telcos have grappled with it, and now they are looking at what more. And that's where I think, again, I would like to bring the – bring the view of these enterprises. Now, that's a big market out there, and the expectation is that by 2025, about 45% of the total revenue of telcos will come from the enterprise side. Today, if you look at in, a, in excess of 90% of the telco revenue comes from the retail side. Now, this is a big shift, and that will happen with or without 5G. 5G will, all, or, or will bring a lot more capabilities to telcos to provide a lot more different services. But even with the 4G, like what you're seeing within India, right? I mean, India, suddenly you see that uh, the, the geomart that has happened, it started tracking to the small enterprises. And with the, with the cloud offering uh, that uh, they are talking about uh, coming together with Azure and Microsoft, they are trying to make the cloud another digital offering to the enterprises in India. So similarly, this is what we are seeing 
seeing across the board with or without 5G. And our solutions around further management and our, our, on, our, on our core areas of augmented analytics platform, all these things are aimed towards addressing the needs of uh, the telcos going forward with or without 5G. 5G will really make these things much more. A lot more new services, a lot more new devices will come into the picture. That will be a kind of a next scaling. But even if the 5G get delayed on some 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 geographies, uh, the the move towards enterprise is real, and that's a key segment that we are currently tracking uh, targeting. And, and sir, in that context, last year we had a good EBITDA margin of 25 percent. And of course, this year, first quarter may not be a reference point because a lot of cost, as what you said, may not be, uh, you know, may not have been incurred, but it is much might come back. Uh, so the question is, sir, uh, on a on a directional basis, sir, if you, uh, I don't know whether you guide or, or you know, give, give some some indication, is that for the full year, directionally, if we grow, uh, uh, will our operating average margin will be better than last year, except uh, X for X H, and uh, if at all, you can give some uh, uh, light on that. Thanks. Thank uh, Yeah, I, um, I mean, I think it's a little difficult for us to do a guidance um, for the uh, revenue or the margins at this point in time. As you know, uh, the market is evolving, and I think uh, we will pretty much keep getting uh, get a, a fresh perspective of how things are evolving on a uh, monthly basis. So at this point in time, it will be a little difficult for us to give you a guidance on either margins or the revenue front. But I think what we are trying to do is run the business efficiently. I think if you really see for Q1, if our Q1 performance, I think we've been extremely cautious in terms of managing our costs um, uh, prudently, and uh, we will continue to do so. But I think uh, if, if you ask me, maybe uh, as things start improving, we'll be in a better position to give you a picture on this in the coming quarters. Okay. Thanks, and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ramesh Kaspekar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, I'm a chartered accountant, so I don't understand much of your IT uh, operations. But I have two questions on expenses. Uh, one is, uh, you have done an expense reduction of five crore in other expenses, uh, probably because you know the traveling costs and uh, the associated costs with that have been uh, have been curtailed. Now, uh, will this continue? Most of your employees are, uh, you say, are operating from remote places. So, uh, so will this continue? That is, uh, that is one question. The other question is, uh, you are saying that, uh, you know, the delivery times have to be expedited. So, will the delivery costs uh, go up? Uh, and you have also appointed some consultants. I believe they are, uh, they are costly people. They are not, uh, they are not something which is. Uh, available cheap. So, uh, how how is their uh, uh, pay packet uh, designed? Is it fixed? I mean, will it add to fixed cost, or uh, will it be uh, dependent on deliverables? Where it is, you know, uh, where it is along with the results, uh, or maybe it's a combination of both. But I don't know how much is the fixed cost and how much is the variable cost. I have a few more questions, but uh, let's first uh, deal with this. Yeah, so Ms. Venki, I'll take the, uh, the first couple of your questions. I think um, uh, on uh, other expenses coming down, as you rightly said, yes, travel and some related uh, spends, like some of the marketing spends, uh, uh, were lower in Q1, which is why you see a dip in costs. Uh, do, uh, how do we see this going forward? I think that's something which will evolve. As the things stands, you know, if you look at quarter two, I think things have not uh, picked up in terms of... Uh, uh, business travel uh, becoming uh, more um, frequent and people starting to travel yet. So I think that has not yet happened as we speak. But we'll have to wait and watch if things can, uh, uh, if things start improving dramatically, maybe then we will resume travel. Because obviously, uh, when people travel, uh, the way some of our uh, opportunities on the table in terms of closures and conversations we have with customers will be far better than what it is today. So Therefore, at this point in time, we see that it is continuing, but we will have to wait and watch to see how it will pan out in the rest of the quarters. Uh, the other question, um, I think, see, we we'll have to look at, uh, I don't know what document you're referring to in terms of uh, consultants and other costs. We have given an investor presentation, which is an updated version. I don't. I think that's the document you have to refer to and uh, yes. from that. I yes. think we have not spoken about any consultants coming on board uh, specifically in our investor presentation. Um, as part of a running business, there will be some um, um, consultants and other people who will engage, and none of them are 
going to be significantly uh, different from uh, how we would engage with uh, with typically consultants who come on board. So that is not going to dramatically change our cost structure in this way, and that's where it will be. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, you know, you must have designed some security measures while uh, people are working on uh, working remotely. You know, your own employees working from different corners of the world. Uh, you must be having some security solutions in place. I, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, and I'm asking this question just to know for my knowledge. But uh, if, if I'm, uh, I mean, most IT companies, I believe, will have a security uh, solution in place when uh, their employees are operating remotely. And uh, my question is, uh, uh, can this be commercialized, number one? Uh, means if, if at all uh, you've been successful in putting a security solution in place for your own employees, uh, can that be commercialized, uh, if, if at all? Because now I believe this COVID thing is not going to run away. I mean, it will continue maybe for a year or two, I don't know. So, so if there is a solution like that, which you have tried in your own uh, business, and if it can be commercialized, I think there, there is a lot of scope there. The second question which I uh, want to ask, and I believe in the previous uh, conversation when uh, the, that voting was to go, I had asked this question, that uh, you have positioned yourself uh, very strongly in the telco segment. Uh, but I don't think uh, there is a there is a, a forward integration with banking. So I, I don't know whether that kind of a thing is possible. It has been thought of by your management. So, you know, because that can add to a revenue stream and most of the telcos which have got relationship with uh, many, um, uh, many large banks can perhaps help you uh, with that if you have good relations with your telcos. So these two questions on the business. Okay. The first one on the security uh, solution. Uh, uh, look, we have a very strong security solution st leading with IoT security, but I think we have started expanding that. We now have uh, expanded that to the operational technology, which is primarily the security solutions that are required for the uh, manufacturing thing, and also an integrated solution where some of the cyber part is also covered. So to your question, while we may not be, we are not uh, leading in with uh, work from home or anything, but we have a very strong security portfolio, which we are sort of developed, uh, developing. But our focus is primarily on the manufacturing and I, I, um, I, I, IoT and industrial IoT, those areas. Uh, so that's the first question. Second, with respect to the, the financial vertical, uh, now, uh, obviously, some of our products uh, have, can find its place in financial segment. Uh, it is a bit, um, uh, it's a very uh, kind of, uh, uh, if I could use that, like the Teleco, it's a kind of a legacy kind of setup. So therefore, I think the, uh, the, for us to enter there, uh, it is a lot more difficult than entering some of the new segments like the e-commerce and fintech, which are much more technology-led operations, and that's where we are focused on. Having said that, we are also looking at specific areas, specific um, uh, areas or opportunities that we have, we see in the insurance and on the, uh, on the financial segment. Uh, we are looking at uh, how to provide that. So uh, and, uh, at this point in time, we have not firmed up our point of view on those areas. And as and when we are clear and we have taken a, a point of view or we have finalized something, we will come back to you on that. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, please limit your questions to two per participant so that the management is able to address questions from all participants. The next question is from the line of Nidhi Hasija from Alpha Alternatives. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on the good set of numbers. I wanted to ask two questions. Uh, regarding the revenue uh, term, uh, how much is the revenue from the new clients? And uh, if you could also give a sense of how much, uh, how much of your older clients have renewed the orders with you? Uh, uh, so, so look. I think, I think, uh, typically, if you look at uh, uh, the, the business, the, our business, our businesses, uh, we add in a full year basis, uh, we add about six to ten new logos. That's what we add on a yearly basis. Uh, so, therefore, a bulk of our business comes from the existing telcos. We take new solution to the existing telcos. 
and uh, uh, and and therefore I think I, I don't fully understand your question in the sense that if you are talking about new products, I mean in the uh, in the new uh, like IoT and others, uh, we have secured some new customers, and as and when we get the specific approval, we will come back with you the specific names. Uh, but with respect to did we lose any customers? No, I think the transition we managed very well, and we have been able to may, uh, keep and uh, maintain all of our existing customers at this point in time. And uh, this is a very sticky business, and you know that it's an enterprise software. And uh, uh, of course, there are there are times when the replacement cycle, or let's say the refresh cycle, comes where uh, uh, where um, um, you know once in a while uh, when when there is a group consolidation or a or a takeover, for example, uh, Idea and Vodafone merged together, and they had to rationalize the uh, rationalize the uh, portfolio. And we were we were selected, and we replaced some of their existing vendors. So, other than that, these are very sticky enterprise solutions that we have, uh, and uh, uh, we have, we have not lost any customer because of this COVID or anything of that nature. Uh, Okay, sir. I wanted to understand. Uh, I wanted to know uh, how many new clients you might have onboarded in quarter one uh, in the core business area. If you can disclose that. So I think, see, unlike the services business, we don't track this number separately and report it. I think if you're looking for this, like the way the services companies report, we don't report that number. But what we try and do in our business is if there are significant wins which we have had with new tele new operators, like if it is in the core business or um, new customers in the newer investment areas, we then try and call them out. Otherwise, you don't necessarily call out and report new customer numbers uh, on a quarter to quarter basis. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mulesh Auja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, what I heard uh, uh, on the call was as part of Horizon 2 uh, on the IoT security that you guys are making slow and steady progress on that. Uh, and I come from the cyber security background. Uh, uh, I understand uh, the likes of Microsoft and AWS are spending huge amount of uh, or doing huge investment in the IoT security. So how does this product uh, get placed vis-a-vis -vis, you know, some of these offerings that these large uh, cloud companies have to offer? Uh, 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 Milesh, based on our um, assessment, uh, we have created a niche for us where uh, yeah, we have we have uh, have a very very large honeypot network, and uh, we are probably generating a lot of threat intel which are specific to the IoT security. And uh, in most of the competitive evaluations, we have clearly come as a clear winner based on the threat intel that we currently have. Now, that is not to say that our other large companies have started work on this matter. Um, we think that at this point in time, we, are, we definitely have a lead of, over some of these uh, other companies when it comes to specific areas like IoT, and that's what we wanted to build on. And we, in, to further, uh, we have also carefully sort of expanded our, you know, our honeypot to research areas in geographies in Europe, Nordics, uh, Dubai, uh, and, and Singapore with primary research uh, centers, uh, which means that where, whatever some of the research things that they are doing, their test and everything, we have extended our honeypot there, and that intel also gets added to us. So while we, we, we definitely will see competition as we go along, at this point in time, point in time most of the competitive RFPs um, are, uh, we are coming on top, and we do not see those kind of uh, uh, you know, vendors that you talked about, this uh, the big one, Microsoft and all, playing specifically in the IoT or the OT security. They more they come from more from the security practice and the cyber thing. Uh, they might be working on it for sure, but at this point in time, we don't see them uh, competing with us in any of the deals that we are uh, uh, Malaysia. Sure, and and the leading uh, question to that is that are you guys trying to position yourself in some of the Gartner Magic quadrants? Uh, uh, and investing money out there. Uh, look, we are we are we are having a routine uh, briefings with the gardeners and uh, gardener analysts. And uh, for instance, recently we came we published that we came up we were referenced as a as a as a sample vendor in the uh, in the gardener augmented analytics uh, report uh, based on the briefing that we do. We do briefing on all of our products, not just security with them. 
Uh, we find that there are others which are much for tracking some of the security much more than that, for like 451 uh, securities and things like that. They have covered us uh, extensively in the past. Uh, so we are, we are doing the briefing and, uh, uh, you know, Gartner does not uh, come, uh, clearly tell you how do they create the magic, magic quadrant and what are the products they come up with magic quadrant, uh, for which, which product category they come up with magic quadrant, et cetera. But we are doing the briefings um, uh, with, with all the analysts, including Gartner. Um. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay from Alpha Line Wealth Advisors. Please go ahead. Yes, good afternoon, gentlemen, and hope you all are doing well. Uh, so my uh, my question is continuation of the, of the last participant who asked about the our stand in global uh, against the global competitor. Strong in our core area, but how do you see how uh, uh, we can see Subax in Horizon Two, Horizon Three, vis-a-vis -vis the competitor in the world? See, um, uh, look, it is a very large market. It's a growing market, and it's going to be very competitive. Our key at this point in time is to ensure that we have the strategic partnerships in place, which will allow us to significantly expand our reach and, uh, and uh, also our ability to serve our customers. So at this point in time, our, 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 our emphasis, particularly during this period when there was a relatively less market engagement, was to work with uh, a lot more partners, strategic partners like the Telefonicas that we announced uh, or, or similar ones like uh, the, the, the fuel cell manufacturer OEM that we have. Uh, now, these, are, these, these companies have selected us after very, very thorough evaluation, uh, and, and you know, they have very, very uh, long cycles of evaluation and long cycles of enablement, right? So I think, I think we believe that this is the right approach for us, and uh, uh, um, you know, we today have uh, many partners which we, have, which we have signed up in various geographies, and therefore our reach is much more than what, our, what we can directly reach the market. And we think that if we continue, uh, continue this uh, with, uh, with a bit support coming from, uh, let's say, um, uh, from, from the market, because you know, it's so unfortunate that some of the key things have put on a hold because of this pandemic. But I guess that we will cross. And as those, those opportunities come, uh, come back, we will be in a good position to leverage that. Oh, having said that, this is a very competitive market, and I think that it will only get get uh, um, get uh, uh, the competition is going to be very intense. And we are gearing up for that. We are gearing up both with the technology, with the research capability that we have, and having more and AI ML capabilities built into the product. And we wanted to differentiate with our product and some of the research that we are able to do in this area. So that's why we are very very we have picked up the niche of IoT and OT because that's where we wanted to be very, very prominent in this area. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Goenka, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Compliments to Team Subex for a good set of numbers and for successfully navigating out of difficult times. The, the capital reduction approval appears to be around the corner. And I feel post this uh, restructuring turnaround and consequent uh, cash generation, this has opened up uh, exciting possibilities like a payment of dividend, buyback, acquisition, expansion, et cetera. Can you share some thoughts on these aspects? And uh, you feel that uh, time is now ripe for rewarding the shareholders in some form? Yeah, so I think um, you're right, Mr. Rajesh. I think uh, definitely uh, the financial performance and the health of the company has and uh, there are um, opportunities which will emerge, but I think as you'll imagine, some of these things, um, some of these decisions will have to be taken in the context of how we, and where those, uh, the uh, cash is invested and we return better, uh, better returns for the shareholder and for the company. And this is something which the board will have to decide. So at this point in time, I think it'll be premature to uh, talk about it. But yes, we will definitely keep um, you updated as as a new uh, board taking calls on some of these areas. 
but you feel the time is now ripe or something is around the corner and in near future we can expect some reward for uh, for the shareholders it's, it's difficult to comment on the timing right because then i'm i'm preempting the decision which a board is typically required to take so i will we will definitely keep you updated as we get to those points thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of supreet prabhu an individual investor please go ahead uh heartiest congratulations on such a wonderful result uh now are you allowed to name some marquee uh, you know clients that you have uh, all 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 across the geography and especially in india i am keen to know that uh, look i think i think in our website we have given a list of uh, customers so just to let you know we operate in over 90 countries and by and large 75% of the top 50 telcos around the globe are our customers uh in india we work with uh, most of the operators it's not all the operators are are our customers so um we 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 have globally we have about 220 customers and uh, as i said in 90 countries and most of the tier most of the tier ones large telco telcos are our customers for one product range or other uh what about e-commerce companies in india we have just started catering to catering to that segment because we were primarily telco telco specific so with our crunch metrics and our crunch metrics uh, product we have just started uh, uh, go, uh, you know engaging with the e-commerce and the fintech segment uh, so at this point in time we are not in a position to announce uh, any of the engagements that we are having but we we just started about about about, about a year back taking to the market and it was a new product around augmented analytics so it's a it's a new area so hopefully we'll have a lot more customers in that area and we should be able to name some of them in the coming quarter and hopefully we'll be waiting for those announcements thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of amit mishra an individual investor please go ahead hello 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 we Yeah hi uh thanks for the uh, opportunity question uh congratulations on the good set of numbers year on year uh but we saw a decline quarter on quarter can you please um, uh, confirm if this is uh, related to covid uh, the the reduction which we see or is there, is there a seasonality involved in the numbers quarter on quarter Okay so so yeah, we are we are still a heavily a license based business and definitely it has been a trend that our our H1 uh yeah, we start uh, low and then we will our H2 is much uh, higher than the H1 so that's a pattern that we have uh, over the years and uh, and um, uh, that that sort of remains um and uh, covid did have a bit of an impact as some of the projects that we were not able to execute on time but uh, i would say that both both the parts are right that quarter 1 is relatively a low quarter for us and it grows up as we go into quarter 4 but uh, definitely the part of quarter covid as well thank you and uh, another question i have is uh, what is the customer or in ma- marketing general feedback of crunch metrics and id center if you can share some details into you know the, the feedbacks you have received uh, also in terms of uh, potential for new deals based on the performance of these products that you have okay so crunch metrics as i said uh, we are going after this uh, uh, e-commerce and the fintech side obviously um, uh, and uh, from from march it was kind of putting a full break on some of these engagements because they were Uh, everybody was trying to prioritize other things and some of these new things that we are talking about they uh, put on hold those engagements have recently started again and we are very quite bullish that uh, uh, it seems to be some uh, we, uh, the, the solution seems to be addressing some key areas with the, with the technology and therefore we believe that uh, it has got a lot of potential with respect to id center as I, as i updated my brief we have sort of soft launch, launched in one territory of indonesia and uh, uh, we have so far have a coverage of about 40 40 uh, percent of the whole uh, 300 million population and uh, uh, th- that's also looking very prosper uh, very promising and uh, you know identity analytics is a very very key aspect and very key aspect for, for the digital trust so we are putting a lot of uh, uh, hope uh, in the coming 
coming years on on uh, on that becoming a very very strong proposition for Sudex, particularly in the digital uh, digital trust scheme of things. Just one more question. Um, Geo's recent announcement uh, that they are going in house with uh, 5G and you know Arpanet and whatnot. Um, do, do, do you see? Because last conference call you said you you don't see much scope in India. Since then, this announcement has happened. So, you you think as a Geo being your customer, um, you have uh, you know good chances to get the get the bite in the pie. Look, look. I think I think uh, the, I, I I remain uh, the the with respect to the our our focus area is supporting them on specifically areas around around uh, you know when they go to the enterprise side with our partner management, risk management with the digital trust with identity analytics, and that is relevant to uh, to to uh, customers in India as uh, the customers in the in the in the uh, you know the develop developed markets. Uh, developed markets, they are uh, probably their growth on the retail side is uh, maybe slightly limited, and therefore they are moving much more faster into those segments. Whereas in India, we are still seeing the disruption that the geo has had, and it kind of resettling settling things. And once that is sort of settled, you see the movements into the into the enterprise side. So I, I'm not saying that India is not a not a key market for us. But India contributes less than 5% of our market because we are primarily, primarily we cater to the telco segment, and the number of telcos we have here is four or five, right? Uh, uh, and so, therefore, therefore, uh, you know, we don't expect that to drastically change as a percentage. But, uh, but obviously, we are engaged with all the telcos in the country uh, in, in in the new areas and to support them, um, you know, to the best of best that we can. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mahesh Jakta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, I have two questions. First question is related to the investor presentation. Is it possible for you to include cost structure, revenue trend in last eight quarters, and the order pipeline? Basically, when I say order pipeline, active deals you are pursuing, how many you have won, and how many you have lost, and how many new deals you have added in the quarter? That will help us to understand how the business trend is going on. And the second question is related to the IoT security. Subex has implemented one IoT security for town in US. And after that, it has also set up center of excellence for IoT security. So what is next on that front? Are we getting any new town or city level IoT security deals in US and Europe? Okay. All right. On the on the five first question, we will take that as a feedback and and come back to you uh, if it can be if it is something which can be done. We will also evaluate uh, evaluate from our end and we will address that. It's about the additions that you requested to the in investor presentation. With respect yes. to the IoT security in the town of Florence, that uh, uh, that uh, that in, in implementation we have now. Post that, uh, we had to get certain approvals as an approved vendor for the U.S. government. And that took some time because we were an Indian entity with a European, with a U.S. Uh, subsidiary. So we we went into a, a, a long process for us to get the approval. Now we have got the approval as a as a sort of an approved vendor for the for the U.S. government entities. But then the COVID started, and now the the priority is uh, towards all, all all the all the towns are looking at the priorities are different. But as and when this this things comes out of this whole. COVID issue, particularly in North America, in in in, in U.S., uh, we intend to take this success. It was a hugely successful implementation, and it's a it's one of our most uh, uh, you know like referenceable customer that we have in the town of Florence, and we intend to leverage that and go to other towns, uh, other towns and counties there, and uh, to expand our presence there. Uh, this is particularly with respect to in North America. So we, we are looking at very specific uh, for the government approach. We are only trying in a few countries. Uh, we are looking at in India. We are looking at in North America, and we are looking at in uh, a country in, in Nigeria, in uh, in Africa. So these are the three countries which we are looking at governmental business at this point in time because you know that it is a very different and enterprise segment, and we didn't want to be too spread too thin. So that's that's our view on this. So as soon as the COVID-related things. Uh, and the government gets free, uh, free out of that, we hope to sort of expand our activity there. 
particularly related to that iot security for town you know a company need to do a lot of publication so that people will be aware of the product that tubex has built for a city surveillance Sure, we have, we sure we are we have we are doing very targeted at this point in time. But as and when we have more successes, we will start expanding more bandwidth in that area. We just want to be very 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 specific, choose a very specific market. That's why I said we are doing a lot more activity in North America, uh, for, because that was important for us to get this approval in the place. And we are doing we are doing some uh, webinars and a lot of other activities are planned in those geographies. Maybe some of them will may not be visible sitting here. Uh, because it's specific to the North American geography, but uh, for these specific areas, we are we are very targeted campaigns are being done at this point and point in time, Mahesh. And IoT security, uh, last uh, question. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Last question. Uh, I'm so sorry, yeah, sir, IOT. but for interest of time, uh, this is the last. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Kale, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, am I audible? Yep. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so, uh, fifty-six percent of your revenue comes from the profits from the LLP business, the partnerships that you have. Uh, do you expect this ratio to change in the favor of operations, or this is pretty much how things would proceed? And a second question is, uh, the share of loss from the digital LLP is increased by sixty-four percent. Whereas the profit of uh, the assurance LLP has dropped by 49 percent, do you see this changing uh, in the upcoming quarters? Thank you. I think you're focusing on the Subex Limited standalone numbers and uh, many of your questions are. Around. Yes. Yes. I would recommend that you look at our consolidated financials, which is also available uh, website. And that gives you a full picture of the entire business because the Cibex Limited uh, financials are uh, reported the way they are because of the structure which we have in terms of uh, Cibex Limited being the listed entity and the LLP is uh, right below that. But as if you look at the consolidated financials, you'll get the complete picture of the company, uh, which is the total revenue and the total profits across all of these entities. I think it's better to look at it that way because that gives a whole uh, uh, a more uh, uh, a realistic and complete view of the business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dave Savala, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Congratulations, Team Sebag. So my question is about the identity analytics. If you could shed some light on how it operates and what sorts of cash flows have we started seeing from this segment? And my second question is, um, what Thoughts of revenue top line contribution have you started seeing from Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 products? Okay, so so first on this identity analytics, uh, uh, you know that we have access to uh, uh, telecom telecom data in uh, in over 90 countries. So um, the uh, the idea is that can we uh, augment this access of data with other source of uh, legitimate data? And then provide a lot of identity analytics for uh, for uh, digital business. So that's primarily the, uh, the the story here. So in Indonesia, where we have done, we have several data aggregators that are brought that are in our platform today. Uh, that is on one side, right? I mean, they provide data for us to do the analytics. So once we get we once we get a request from a service provider, the service provider could be bank, e-commerce company, a fintech company, anybody who wants to do digital business. We get a request for an identity analytics, either when they onboard a customer or do a particular transaction with the customer, and then we take the consent of the customer. And once we get the consent of customers using the data that we have, we do analytics and provide those those whatever it is required. And then it gets into the workflow. So that's a, that's a whole thing, and we get a compensation from the service provider. Then that is shared between the between the respective uh, uh, data aggregators. Now uh, this is in the MVP stage at this point time, point in time, and we have soft launched that in Indonesia. So we got uh, uh, it's, a, it's a platform. Uh, so in the platform, on one end, we have this data data brokers or data aggregators come on board. So we have several data aggregators. So we have about 40% coverage of the whole country today. And we are now in the 
uh, we are working with the service providers to tune the use cases so that we can tie them together. At this point in time, we don't have any revenue contribution coming from here. On the revenue contribution from the new areas is, uh, um, for the quarter one is quite insignificant because uh, it was, a lot of this thing was affected, a lot of our projects and execution on the new areas was affected by COVID. Uh, but as and when we, we start seeing uh, that a sizable number, at this point in time, it's a very, very low as a percentage of our total revenue. We'll start providing, uh, providing a specific, uh, uh, you know, breakout of that. Um, towards the, uh, for the whole year, we, we intend that for the whole year, we should be able to come back to you with what is the contribution from the new areas. Uh, mm -hmm. And so what, what sorts of revenues are we projecting by the end of the current financial year from all these segments, the identity analytics and Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 products? No, we, we, we do not have any specific guidance that on, on that area, but as and when we, we have some wins. In the, and th again, please understand that these are all SaaS-based business, which is very different than our, uh, our, our uh, normal license-based revenue that we, have, that we have with the telco space. So um, it is. We are. We are not even looking at. at the, for the for the time being, our our focus is to have a lot more customers and partners on the platform, and the platform to grow the platform to a sizable number, so that uh, the the revenue will be meaningful. So our current focus is not on the revenue. So even for both, I mean, for IoT is different, but I think I'm talking about both crunch metrics and ID Central. Our current intent to is to have a lot more customers on our platform and make the platform very meaningful uh, uh, rather than the revenue focus for this year. Thank you. We take the last question from the line of Mithun Ashwat from Kiwi Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, just wanted a question on, uh, you know, you mentioned Horizon 1, 2, and 3. What is the revenue in each segment currently and where you see this mix likely to change over the next two years? See, right well, now, if you look at the mix, the, the mix is predominantly in the Horizon 1 area. And as you know, has been explaining, I think Horizon 2, um, uh, we have these products like the IoT security and um, our um, analytics as a service uh, offerings which are there, which are um, at different stages uh, of taking to the market. And Horizon 3 is obviously in the investment stage because it is still in the process of rolling out those products. So if you look at a composition right now, this almost 98% of our current revenues will be from Horizon 1. Horizon 2 uh, is a smaller proportion, but I think the idea is this will become a larger share as we go along, uh, and we do want it uh, to become a larger share. Our idea is at least 25% of our business should come from Horizon 2 and 3 areas, but that's a process and we'll have to, go to, uh, we'll have to keep updating you as we get to that. Is there any target over the next two, three years when you're going to reach, achieve this 25% or it's more like a moving goalpost? See, our aspirational goal is to get there in the next maybe two to three years, but I think we will have to keep updating this given the current events and how the business evolves. Right. Um, so a couple of quick ones. I just wanted to understand, is there any ESOP plan in place? I see about 3%, I think, is held by employees. I just wanted to know what is, uh, you know, the management share in the company uh, so that they are also rewarded with this recovery and improvement in the company. So just wanted to understand there that because you don't have any visible promoter as such. Correct. So you are right. So we have created the ESOP trust exactly for that reason. So the senior management uh, does have uh, a reasonable number of options uh, which are uh, which have been granted to the senior management team uh, and also to other key members uh, in the company. Uh, so we, the idea is to um, uh, get the employee holding in the company to about 4 to 5% over a period of time, and that obviously will lead to the, the senior management and other key employees in the company having uh, a direct, um, uh, direct interest in the company's performance uh, being better than what it is today. So yes, you're right, so the upsides of the performance of the stock will also accrue to the people. So we do have um, a reasonable chunk of options granted to the senior member. I think you can see that in our annual report of last year, and we will publish it uh, for the coming year, as uh, for the, um, the year before. I'm talking about 18, 19, it, uh, the information is available, and 1920 annual report also will be available sometime in September. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments.
Well, well as, you, as you can appreciate, we are um, uh, definitely, uh, the whole uh, world is going through an extremely challenging situation. And um, uh, as, a, as a team, we are trying to navigate out of this crisis by being agile uh, based on the information uh, that is available to us from time to time. We are confident that we will emerge out of this crisis stronger. Uh, as investors, we look forward to your continuous support. I request you all to take care and wish you and your family good health and happiness. Uh, stay safe, and thank you very much for attending this call. Thank you.